Welcome back guys. I'm at the cabin today and I've got a special guest. Stay tuned for our adventures. Just making breakfast and uh, lots of people means lots of bacon. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. And blueberry pancakes. It's lovely here in the mornings now. As you can see, it's just above, it's about 12 degrees. Nice and cool. Just love this time of year. So I'm here with my friend Gary from Unfrequented World. He's taking some photographs. Damselfly. Well, if you want to see more of that, go check out his channel. I'm just going to be uh, giving you a few little tidbits of our weekend here together. Just taking a look at the insects in the field. It's been a bumper year for monarch butterflies and damselflies and stuff here. So we're just out taking some photographs to start off our time. So he's just taking a look at a butterfly over here. Here he's just getting a photograph. Whoa! Gotta be quick with these butterflies around here. Oh, there he is. And there's Gage. You guys know Gage from uh, Gary's videos. So we're just taking some photographs of uh, caterpillars we find. And here's another one we found on the milkweed. That's not a monarch caterpillar, but uh, it's very interesting. This is me taking a picture of you taking a picture of me. <laughs> While we're out here, the choke cherries are ready, so they're nice black color. So I'm going to come back later and uh, collect them, and maybe I'll make some uh, choke cherry jelly or just um, just some juice. Um, lots of them on the bushes this year. You guys knew that from my previous videos, but it uh, looks like the birds and the animals have had at them, so I better uh, I better get my little share of them too. So we're just hanging out here at the beach with everybody. We're just uh, enjoying a nice day out here. Um, Nice and cool breeze, but hot, so I'm gonna get in the water pretty soon and uh, have a swim. So I've been uh, doing a little bit of uh, canoe training with Royce. I get him in the life jacket and we just paddle around the lake. It's going really well. Uh, he whines a little bit, but uh, he doesn't try to jump out, which is good. Here we are in the boat and he's doing really well. <laughs> All right, looks like one point for silver. And what a better way to finish off the day than a little Corona. <laughs> we had a great time at the- Not a lot of Corona. <laughs> no, no, and we're not six feet apart. Mm. 10 person bubble, it's fine. So uh, we had a great time there at the lake, teaching Royce how to swim and uh, be in the canoe and just, just relax. And so we're gonna enjoy a little Corona. Cheers guys. Well, my potatoes are probably uh, ready. I'm sure if I dug up in and around here, I'd find some for supper. Oh yeah, well, little new potatoes probably. Now, there you go, nice little new potatoes. Perfect. Every now and then I dig through here in the spring and I find more. It's gotta dig around where you planted them to find them. So then you sort of let them sort of sit out, preferably not in the sunshine, um, to just dry up surface of them and have them for supper. This one's a bit rotten, so I'm not going to eat that, but new potatoes at the property. Yummy. Out on a little morning foray. Uh, I like going out in the forest when, um, you know, it's still kind of dark out. So are the early evening or early morning so that I can see the contrast of the mushrooms on the, um, the brown leaves. So here we go. We've got some hedgehog mushrooms to start us off and these ones aren't in the best shape but uh, there's a few of them right here there's a few more mushrooms coming out now and I'm really excited because we're upon fall very shortly and that's the prime mushroom foraging season it looks like my uh, my oyster mushroom log flushed again this is amazing I've also been enjoying um, some chanterelles that have come out. I think they're a different species of chanterelle than I had the last time. They kind of have a frilly cap, slightly pink underneath. 
and uh, last night I was able to find some porcini mushrooms which are a delicacy so I was really excited about that and uh, last night I had a nice mushroom stir fry so I'm really looking forward to fall I'm really hoping that um, it rains a lot so that uh, we can get a lot more foraging in here's one of those chanterelles I was talking about um, I find their caps are really really frilly and underneath uh, you can't really appreciate it on this uh, shot here but um, the fall scales actually have a very faint pink tinge to them so I'm not sure what species of chanterelle it would be um, but they're delicious nonetheless maybe a little less firm you know when you cook them um, this one I'm not going to eat obviously it's kind of chewed up but uh, so take a look this guy looks pretty good excellent you might think that this one here is a chanterelle but it's not it's another one of my favorite mushrooms this is lactarius Oh my goodness, this is really awesome. This is my favorite one. These are really good for pickling. You break the cap, this is an orange latex. So uh, this is pretty exciting. i got to look for more of these. There's also a ton of coral fungus out right now. This is a really interesting fungus. Take a look at that. This one's not edible as far as I know. Um, you take a little piece of it there. You can see it looks exactly like coral. Uh, even the edible coral mushrooms, I don't know if I'd really be interested. Just the texture alone is kind of weird. A lot of boletes in the forest right now, and if you take a look at this one, it's really chewed up. But this is a scaber stalk bolete or a birch bolete. Uh, you can see the little flecking here on the um, the stem and yeah, a nice top. You can eat these mushrooms, obviously not this one. It's kind of chewed up. These guys tend to get really chewed up with bugs. So you kind of got to catch them early. Got some porcini mushrooms earlier, so that was exciting in the bolete family. But uh, yeah, these are scaber stalk bolete or the birch bolete. These guys stand out like a sore thumb in the forest. It's awesome, actually. Take a look. They're just everywhere. If you're really into these guys, they're huge. There's a the dog for reference. Yeah. So we'll just keep our eye out for Porcini. Those ones are a bit more select choice than these guys are. Lots of birch in here. So lots of these guys. Yeah, see, like, really hard to find one that's not completely eaten alive by bugs. There's some nice hedgehog mushrooms. I think I'll take these guys. Just heading down towards the water now and uh, a lot more um, conifers. So we'll see what we can find. Here is a beautiful orange uh, club fungus. Take a look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, here we go. There's a little patch of chanterelles. Awesome. Again, it looks like they're the little frilly capped variety that I discussed earlier. Um, I wish you guys could see the color difference here. It's a very slight salmon color uh, to the underneath of the cap here. It's not visible with the way this phone is filming right now, but um, yeah, very neat. Here's a mushroom I'm excited about finding. Here's some puff balls. So take a look. Look at these guys right here. They're, I'm gonna let them go another day, but uh, these are the puffball mushroom, and these are delicious if you slice them all up and fry them in butter and a little bit of garlic. Yummy. So they grow, I've seen them in maple forests also in the field here. There's another one over there, something's kind of clawed at already, so hopefully I can let this one mature just another day. Every morning, the boys have to get together. There you guys are. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, they play for all day long. They have lots of fun. So Gary's really into metal detecting and also into some paranormal stuff. So we decided we'd hit the road and uh, travel around in the bush and find some old logging sites. So um, this area is very rich in logging history Canadian logging history so uh, there is a spot that I'm thinking of that's going to um, you know be really interesting to check out so uh, we're gonna head up there right now right to get to our location we're going to go down all these uh, logging roads here so you got to be careful there's people out in ATVs sorry about the jiggling the roads are really bad but uh, this is the kind of forest that we're in so here we are along a beautiful river that was one of the rivers used uh, during the peak of the logging in Ontario in the late 19th and early 20th century. So um, in the winter time the um, trees would be cut down, mainly pine trees, and brought out onto the frozen water here onto the ice 
And in the spring, uh, the loggers would run the logs down the river towards um, markets nearby. It was extremely dangerous in these waters, very treacherous. A lot of men lost their lives um, working out here in the forests of the Ontario deep woods. Along the shores here, many men died. Um, it was impossible to kind of get them out for proper burials, so they were buried alongside the river wherever their bodies were found. And there are several memorial sites along the river where their names are inscribed onto rocks for us to remember the sacrifices they made for us. So the type of logs that uh, the loggers cut around this area were pine and they were very, very large and they were used for ship masts over in Europe. Uh, and they went along the river and then they were shipped overseas. So, I mean, there's some crazy pictures online of how big the trees were around here. There's very few uh, old growth trees left like that. I think there's a few left in Algonquin Park, some of the large white pine. Of course, those pines had to be nice and straight for ship masts. So occasionally you'll find some really old trees that are really gnarled uh, and have lots of um, you know, different shapes to their trunk. Those ones were left because they were undesirable. So an area rich in history and very interesting to explore. All this type of uh, jagged rock formation here. Uh, this is what you know. The, that's what the water rushes over. So you can see how treacherous it would be. You know there was water probably here at some point. This is probably the edge of the river way back when. So you can imagine all the water drained out of here. That's what it looks like. This isn't uh, not too surprising why there would be some kind of a logging accident if the logs jammed up and the guys were out here trying to remove the jam. Got their legs stuck. Not good. A different kind of rock in here. This is uh, some quartz. Beautiful, beautiful rock. Hard to see with the glare, but uh, really sparkly. Well, so far on this side of the river, I've not been able to find. Um, some of the inscriptions in the rocks, but look what I did find. I found a porcini mushroom. <laughs> Consolation prize. Anyways, I'll show you guys some photos I took years ago of um, some of the memorials carved into the rocks here. There's quite a few of them in here, so that's good. So, uh, beautiful forest in here. A lot of uh, cedar, other conifers, as well as some deciduous trees. Right here is one of the uh, old moorings to sort of hold the logs. Super interesting piece of history right there. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you again next time. Take care.